give it up for Mark Hemian. Okay. Hello. Hello. Are you hungry? Are you excited to be done? Yes. No. Yeah. Okay. How many developers are in the room? I just want to get a feel. Okay. How many black girls who code? We got a couple. How many white guys who entrepreneur? All right. How many designers, UXers? All right. Cool. My people. How many others? Others. Accounting. Oh. Oh, sorry, yeah, marketing, marketing folks, messengers, copywriters, uh, dog owners, lovers of the color black. Woo! Woo! Black doesn't get enough play, you know? So um, my name's Mark Hemian. Oh, I think we have a slide for that. We do. Oh, shit. Sorry. OK, there we go. This is hot. This is hot. You guys said only press once. I only pressed once. Uh, my name uh, is Mark, and um, my last name is pronounced Hemian. Um, I had a startup called Flick a number of years ago. Google bought it. I ended up working at Google for about four years until it drove me crazy, and I quit about two weeks ago. So we're going to talk about that. Um, we're going to talk about the things I learned at Google. We're going to talk about I don't know, whatever you guys want to talk about, really. We're just going to get down with it. Um, props to Sprint and all the awesome sponsors. Props to Silicon Prairie News for putting this whole thing on. Props to these beautiful airplanes for like making it look awesome in here. And what, who else needs props? Who needs props? Shout it out if you need props. Company. You just missed a chance. Yeah, OK. Well, look. Hey, I grew up going to Camden Yards. I didn't want to bring up the Royals Orioles thing, but we can talk about that. We can do some Q&A after. Good luck, Royals. 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 I, like, you're talking to a guy who just a week ago found out there are two Kansas cities. So it's taking me a while. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm lucky to be here. I'm lucky to even get on the plane. Um, so real quick, um, these are some companies that I had started, and some of them are still going, some are not. These are companies that I've worked at as a designer or a design lead. Um, you know, Oakley, Dig, you know, who remembers Dig back in the day? Oh, rest in peace. I mean, it's still around, but it's like not what it was. Anyway, um, I, I basically, when I first started at Google, I worked at YouTube for about two and a half years, and I think my biggest claim to fame is the little triangle on the play button. Like, that was me in my Photoshop file, really complicated, like, line, line. Yeah. So when you guys hit that play button, you think of me, and the maximize, of course, and the pause, and uh, the settings, too, and, of course, the buffering thing. Can't do much about that. Sorry. Okay. So we're just gonna we're gonna fire through because I'm hungry, you're hungry. We don't want to like no BS here. Let's just get to it. So toothbrush test. Who's heard about this? What this is? All right, cool. One person. Is that Eric? Handsome gentleman, a bearded wonder, robotic genius. Um, toothbrush test is very simple. Um, and by the way, I should I should set some context. Everything I'm gonna be talking about today are things that I learned at Google to help build products. Okay, so this should apply to anyone in here. Even if you're a marketing person or whatever, you're going to be focused on creating. You're creating something. Everyone is here. I don't know what it is, but it's probably awesome. Um, the toothbrush test is when you're developing an app, it, you should, people should want to use this thing at least twice a day. I'm a bit of an OCD brusher. I brush like four times a day, but that's me. Two's plenty. If you don't brush your teeth twice a day, you should maybe start doing that. Um, and this is something Larry Page says all the time. Like anything we do, whether it's, you know, so you think about Gmail. Who does their email at least twice a day? You poor souls. Yeah. Okay, so Gmail is an example of this. Um, that's great. All right, what's next? Oh, fantastic. The more you do, the more you'll be asked to do. Um, there's a theme that you'll see kind of through these slides, this kind of overarching optimism in, in personality, I think. A lot of times at a company, it depends on kind of, kind of where you're at in the, in the stack, but I really believe in this. When you're, when you're asked to do something, just say yes. Just do it. Don't be a baby. Just figure it out. And whatever, this engineer's blocking you or this market, you know, something's happening where you can't actually do it. It's okay, figure it out. Like do an end around, ask forgiveness, not permission, and just get it done. What you'll find is over time, people start like, damn, like Eric's freaking legit. Like, He's going to, they're going to ask you to do more stuff and more stuff. And you know what? They're not going to pay you for it. And that's okay. Because at some point, they will pay you for it. What's that? Who read that TechCrunch article on, 
our friend from Microsoft and the woman comment. It's kind of interesting, but uh, anyway, we're not going to get into that because we want to stay PC. Okay, All, this is my philosophy. Always say yes, no matter what, no matter how annoying it is. I answer every email, every tweet, anything that ever comes my way just because I feel like saying, you know, you have a lot of people like, you got to say no, you got to say no to a lot of things and really focus on what you want to do. I think that's stupid. I think you should say yes to everything, okay? Obviously have a filter, right? Don't say yes and like get into like some codependent relationship where you get in this really abusive kind of emotional dark place. That's bad, yes. Don't say yes to that. But at work or with, with people who need help, um, other entrepreneurs, developers, engineers, designers, there's, you know, I say yes to everything. And I'll give you, I'll give you a few examples. Last year, um, I, I get asked to advise companies a lot, like, hey, will you advise our startup and look at our app and give us some thoughts? I'm like, sure, why not? And uh, typically the way that works is they trade you maybe like a, a little slice of equity or maybe some money or whatever it might be. So there's like at least five companies I said yes to last year, probably spent 100 hours each company. All of them are done. They're all gone. Nothing. There's nothing. Nothing came from that at all. Except for close relationships. I learned a few things. I, ho I hope that I help them out. Um, and, but I didn't, say, I didn't say yes for any kind of monetary gain, any kind of social capital gain, although those things do tend to come with that. Um, just say yes. You're not too cool. You're not too important. You're not too famous, not too whatever. Just, do what it, just say yes. Anyway, what else we got? Let's see. Oh, I even have a TV down here. This is great. So <laughs> who watches Survivor? Is that even on TV anymore? Survivor? Do you guys remember that? I'm getting, OK. Fine. Survivor is a television show back in when people had TVs. Um, show up is fascinating. Most, most folks who just show up every day, do their job, work hard, are the ones that are going to get kind of promoted, I, in, my, in my feeling. And it's just it's amazing how people just don't show up. They just, they just don't put in the time. There's no really secret to this, but show up, do great work, and you're good to go. All right, what's up? What else what's we got? Ah, who saw this movie? The Internship? That's not how Google is at all, but I think it's really funny. Um, Googly, when we interview people at Google, um, and I've probably interviewed about 200 people at Google, one of the things that we, we measure you on is your Googly-ness. There's actually a thing, like, how Googly are they? And, um, and we, of course, we interview for cognitive ability and how, all, you know, how eccentric you are. No, not eccentricity, but Googly is this idea of always being willing to help somebody. And, What's fascinating about this concept is that, and we, there's no, there's no I, right? There's no like, well, you know, I, uh, I'm on top of Stack Overflow with the number one rating on number of answers, or I created the best whatever plugin. Um, Google is very much about the we. It's very much about this idea of um, collaboration, and in fact. If, I, if we ever interview someone and they're like, look, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the VP of marketing at my company. I just want to like, get into a position where I can grow and become a CEO someday. I'm like, I don't give a So what? I don't give a crap. You can't do anything as an individual. It's almost impossible. And that's what's interesting about product design. You can't do it by yourself. And so when I find an entrepreneur who doesn't even have a co-founder, I'll never, I'll, I just... I'll say yes to talking to them, but I'll say no to investing. Or I'll say no to even, you know, or at least encourage them to find a co-founder. You find, you find someone with a co-founder, and at least they've convinced someone else their idea is, is valid. You find someone who's kind of all alone and trying to figure things out, um, that's a hard, that can be a really hard sell. So anyway, being googly is just this idea of always being willing to help, never kind of making excuses for not helping, you know, never like, anyway. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's keep going. We got more stuff. Oh, this is wonderful. Who does improv comedy? Are there improv comedians? We got three. Oh, the host, of course. <laughs> um, okay, this is the number. Is this the number one rule of improv? Ish. What number is it? Like two, three? Close to one ish. All right, fine. We'll call it number two point four. So um, she actually came and spoke at Google and and kind of shared this. So this is how, so how does improv work? You want this to, how does it work? Talk loud. Okay, so wait, okay, wrong answer. How does the yes and work in improv? Sorry, yes and, then it does this. Okay. 
All right, great. So I know no one heard what he said. Also, I'll repeat what he said. In improv, you start out a scene. I'm like, so you and I are doing a scene. I'm like, I'm going to ride this unicorn. We're going to go to like Taffy Land. And you say, yes. And we're going to find a rhinoceros. And we're going to ride him too over to Jupiter. And then I say, yes. And Jupiter's my favorite planet because they have peanut M&Ms and chocolate rainbows. At any time, if I were to say no, like if he's all like, well, let's rewind a little bit. He's like, rhinoceros, da, da, da. I'm like, no. Well, you know, it just kills it. It kills the whole thing. So yes and is a super powerful tool that you can use in any meeting. It's a superpower, all right? Any meeting, any discussion you're having with anybody, like someone's brainstorming an idea, even if you think it's the stupidest idea you've ever heard, try it. Just be like, okay, go with it. Say yes and, add to it, and try to really suss that idea out and take it to its kind of natural conclusion. This is a super powerful tool. We use it all the time at Google. Um, I use it all the time just in my relationships and the folks that I'm talking to because there's this, there's this kind of ego thing, right? And we'll talk about that a little bit. There's this ego thing that, that you want to be the originator of the idea. You want to be the person that kind of brings it out. That's just get rid of that crap, all right? In collaboration, like true collaboration, you can't even pull out where the idea even originated from. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that you are Jonathan Ives. You are not Steve Jobs. You're not Jonathan Ives. Don't worry about it. None of those guys have built anything amazing without an incredible team around them. Steve had another Steve, Mr. Waz. Steve, Steve number one would be nothing without Steve number two. Um, anyway, getting a little intense, so I gotta chill out. All right, higher smarter than you. Truly higher smarter than you. Again, this goes into ego. This is really, really hard. Because when you meet someone smarter than you, like genuinely, it's scary because they are articulate, they're thoughtful, all these wonderful things, and they're gonna take your job. They probably, I'll, you know, I've worked for a lot of folks like this, and like we just hired at my startup, we just, we have three wonderful engineers, they're brilliant, and uh, we kinda, I don't know, it's like intimidating, you know, it's just like, you, you meet these really amazing smart people, you hire them, and now you're in this really interesting position where you end up elevating yourself. Like I think, there are a lot of smart people at Google, but what's interesting is when you like, walk through the doors of Google, you kind of like, I don't know, you make yourself smarter because you feel like you don't want anyone to find out that you're not really smart. So you try to be really, really smart and kind of make up for it. Anyway, 20% time. 20% time is cool. And we do this at Google, not as much now. Google's getting very big, but we still do it. Um, in your organizations, in your companies, in your personal life, carve this out for yourself. Even, you know, you don't need to like tell your boss or whatever, but figure out a way to do the little extra fun stuff. Because this is the stuff that like will probably lead to your next job, will probably lead to the next interesting thing that you do in your life. And for me personally, I, I uh, after YouTube, long story short, I started working on some more AdWords side of Google, Google Analytics, kind of that kind of stuff. And it was killing me. It was, it was really hard. I was bored out of my mind. And so I hadn't done any 20% time, and it'd been, this was like October of last year, and so I'm like, I'm gonna take 20%, I'm gonna take the last two months of the year, and that's my 20% time. And I got invited to work on the self-driving car project for a little bit, um, on, and that side of Google is called Google X, and it was just this wonderful opportunity to kind of flex and do something else creatively. But I feel like, you know, whether it's at Sprint or any, any other company, I, this, if you can implement something like this, you're gonna allow for people not to burn out. You're gonna, and you, frankly, I mean, Gmail came out of a 20% project. You never know what, what'll come out of something like this. Anyway, cars that drive themselves. Okay, emo EQ, who knows what this is? Or heard it, emotional intelligence, EQ, empathy. We've, you know, we've talked a little bit about that today. Um, I, all I really wanna say about this is this idea that like, as you meet people all around the world, all around the country, we're all kind of the same. And we all kind of have the same basic needs of wanting to be included, wanting to be loved, wanting to, want to have some kind of connection to one another. And I think as you're building apps and as you're thinking about the behaviors that you want to encourage people to do, your emotional intelligence is really important. Your ability to understand how other people and empathize with how users are uh, reacting to your software, reacting to the things you're building. Um, BJ, who knows who BJ Fogg is? Yeah, yeah, okay, he's a professor at Stanford. I almost just fell off the stage and flattened my face. Um, here's the thing about, let's talk about B.J. Fogg for a second. This is all his stuff, so I didn't make up any of this. Again, much smarter person. 
um, any behavior that you want someone to do. So like, let's take YouTube, right? What do you think our goal is for YouTube? Okay, you're right. It's to get you ridiculously addicted to cat videos. Like, is watch as many as possible, okay? And, and we do that a few ways. The secret sauce of YouTube, I'm gonna give it to you right here at uh, Big Kansas, is the right rail of those videos. There's related videos, it's like catnip, it's like crack cocaine right there. So you're watching that one video, your eye kind of glances over, you're like, hmm, that looks interesting. Bam, you're done. You're done, we got you for like 30 minutes, 40 minutes, you're just productivity shot. We're dragging down the GDP by at least two or 3% a year. It's wonderful. Um, but we, we, we are very calculated on which videos show up there, and in particular, the, about the fourth one down is just for you, you in particular. And we know that based on you know, videos you've looked at before. We're not perfect, of course, because I, you know, like I click on Lady Gaga, and next thing you know, my whole homepage is Lady Gaga. It's, it can be a little aggressive. I like Lady Gaga, don't judge. Um, I also like Kesha. I love Beyonce, too. I mean, they're all, they're all great. Um, but what's, in, what's interesting about this is there's, there's three things to think about with behavior. There's triggers, there's motivation, and there's ability. And so let me give you an example. So, and this is, again, this is all BJ Fogg stuff, and I'm just stealing his stuff. I'm sorry, trademark BJ Fogg, wonderful person. I've never met him. Well, I met him once, but he won't remember. Anyway, and so you can apply this to, like, anything, okay? So a trigger. So let's say your phone rings. Phone rings, that's a trigger. And so when it starts ringing, you don't answer it sometimes, right? Why, shout out a reason you don't answer your phone. What, it rings too much, okay, so it annoys you. What else? Huh? It's your girlfriend and you don't want to talk to her. Yeah, okay, good, what else? What are some other reasons? You're in the shower, right? Maybe you're like, look at this, I have a brand new iPhone 6, I freaking dropped it already, it's already cracked, it doesn't work, okay. So the, the whole like girlfriend, you're annoyed, that's your motivation. The whole like my phone's broken, I'm in the shower, that's ability. So in order for me to actually answer my phone, I need, it needs to ring, right? Then I need to actually have the physical ability to answer it and I need to be motivated to answer it. So those three things, trigger, ability, motivation, those three things have to come together for the desired action. So if you're in marketing or whatever and you're like trying to get something to happen, you want, to, you want someone to buy something. You want, like at YouTube, we want you to watch another video. You gotta make sure those three things come together perfectly. And you gotta figure out, to, you gotta figure out how your app can like take advantage of those things. That's why to be honest, like weight loss apps, saving money apps, things like that, that try to change behavior, they're brutal. They are so hard to get right. Um, I, you know, so if you're working on that, I think it's killer but just realize you need those three things to kind of work together. So you take a product like Instagram, um, and you know, they work with BJ Fogg a little bit. They take care of this. You're already motivated to take a great picture. And in fact, Instagram helps you to take an even better picture with filters or whatnot. The trigger there, the trigger is kind of just living your life moments. You see something, you want to take a picture of it. Um, and of course, the, the, they, they made the ability of taking a photo actually a little bit easier. They all of a sudden made you like a professional picture taker person. So that's kind of an example of those three things. Now, if you want to stop a behavior, by the way, if you want to like quit smoking or quit porn or I don't know, whatever. I don't, I'm not sure why you'd want to quit either of those two things, but <laughs> you just knock out one of those legs, right? Just knock out the trigger. You knock out the ability. Motivation can be hard to knock out, so maybe just focus on the other two, three. I did not intend to talk about that, but there we go. Um, oh, whoa, 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 can't get Tyson yet. Let's do the giant crop circle thingies. It's probably in Kansas City somewhere. Me so measure all the things. All I mean by that is that uh, once you have a product, and this can be harder when you're just starting out, um, you know, obviously get data. Don't become a data psychopath where you use it to justify every one of your behaviors, but definitely measure, measure as much as you possibly can. I mean, there's so many wonderful analytics tools now, mixed panel, you know, if you're doing mobile development, of course, my old alma mater, Google Analytics. Um, but a lot of times, you know, you get into a discussion with folks and no one has a data, no one knows. Everyone's like kind of pulling things out of the air. So anyway, data's good, use it. Okay, punch above your weight class. We, I was surfing in uh, Mexico and I have a brother, um, Jason, I'm sorry, I'm gonna embarrass you, Jason. Don't be mad. We were surfing in Mexico and, um, we heard about this mythical place called Palo Alto. 
which is kind of weird because there is that place in California. Um, and so we got a boat, we hired this guy, took us out to this reef in the middle of the ocean, actually. It was really big. And, my, and uh, we get out there and we all jump off the boat. My brother wouldn't jump off the boat because it's too big. And, and we, so we catch some waves. And my brother, I'm like, Jason, come on. So he finally gets out, he gets paddles over, and he's just freaking out. And he's just like, I'm punching above my weight class, man. I can't do this. I was like, that's a great saying. I'm gonna use that in a talk. It's amazing. And so he never, he never gave a talk, or he, 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 he took a little bit of time, but eventually he caught a wave. And it, like, his eyes lit up, and he was so stoked, and he was so happy, and he did something that was uncomfortable for him. Um, and so I think, you know, do, do the uncomfortable things. So we've talked, we've talked about saying yes, we talked about showing up, we talked about, you know, the more you do, the more you'll be asked to do. And I think your capacity increases, I really do, just as a human being. And this is another one of those things, putting yourself in an uncomfortable situation, saying yes to something you have no idea how to do, you know? I mean, how do you start black, you know, black girl's coat? I mean, I have no idea, but she just dove in, she figured it out, and just kind of went for it. So I think punching above your weight class, I mean, obviously not against Mike Tyson, that would be the only rule. Don't do that, he'll knock you out. Anyway, let's see what else we got here. Ah, okay. In start, these all feel a little orthogonal. You know, these are just, just like a bunch of nuggets. So take the nuggets that you like, the other ones that you think are dumb, just ignore them. You don't need them. Okay, peer reviews. There, there's an interesting meritocracy at Google where at the end of the year, when it comes time to get promoted, the way it works is you don't, your boss doesn't promote you. You have to ask all your peers and be like, hey, how do you think I did this year? And so if you're a complete asshole, you're screwed. Like, because no one's gonna help you. Um, I think this also contributes to the culture of collaboration. Because people know at the end of the year, peers are gonna have to review you. Um, whether you have peer reviews, and you know, some people call this 360, there's a lot of different methodologies around this and thinking around this. But I think having the attitude that your peers are the ones who are gonna validate you um, can really impact your day to day and how you interact with each other. So anyway, I'm happy to talk more in detail about that if you have questions like how to do that. Anyway, accessibility, I mean accessibility, but I had no empathy for this before I went to Google. And at Google, we have this wonderful team of folks who are accessibility experts. And I think one of the biggest problems with product design right now is there's no accessibility thought about. You get these designers who like, man, they do like light gray on top of lighter gray on top of dark on top of whatever. There's no contrast. It looks beautiful, but it's useless. Because there's so many people in our country who have bad eyesight, they're colorblind. Um, you know, there's a whole list of accessibility issues. And I think, Really thinking about, we have such this wonderful, diverse world where, ooh, sorry. I was going like the Warby Parker guy. Just kidding. No offense. Um, the, uh, I mean, you think about mobile apps, right? Most folks don't have good data connections. They really don't. And so, you know, making your mobile apps very, very responsive, very fast, um, working on really crappy 3G connections, working on little iPhone 4s. I mean, most folks nowadays, like if you go to, I mean, a lot of folks, you know, they're living on a budget and they have to make a decision on what they're gonna do. And so they'll, like your families all over are like tethering. They'll have one cell phone plan and they'll tether that plan with, that, with like five or six people. Well, it turns out when you tether a 3G account with five or six people, things are gonna run, you know, run really slow. So I don't know, anyway, we can get into that later too. People and ideas, I think they're both important, so. That's that. <laughs> Ego, get rid of it. Who cares? No one cares. I don't care that you're on the popular page in Dribble. I don't care how many followers you have. I just, it doesn't matter. What matters is your willingness to help one another. I mean, truly. Uh, anyway, what else we got? Yeah, all right, knuckles, props, give props. Not fisting, knuckles, okay? Knuckles, give props. Um, I think this is really important because, again, it. It's just a humility thing. It just allows you to tell other people, yeah, all right. <laughs> there was a really funny USA Today article back when President Obama got um, elected and he was given knuckles to Michelle and it said, Brock Fisto of Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> really weird. <laughs> I, it's USA Today, it wasn't me. Sorry, don't get offended, I'm sorry. Sorry, this guy's walking out. He's like, that guy, California man. I 
We're not, Bi- this isn't Bible Belt, is it? It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Great. Be civil, be civil. Be kind, be civil. What's an example of being uncivil? Let's talk about that. All right, who's been in a meeting? You get in a meeting, and like the decision maker dude or woman is like 20 minutes late. And so you start, but whatever, you start it anyway, because you're like, ah, they'll be here in a little bit. You know, Eric will be here in a little bit, don't worry. And then Eric rolls in like 20 minutes. Oh, I'm sorry, do you, can we just start at the beginning again and just kind of back up a little bit? Dude, screw that person. Um, that's, an un, that's an uncivil thing to do. You know, if you're a boss or whatever you are, and, and you, go to a, you have a meeting scheduled and someone has something, to, get there on time. That's being civil. Being civil is being kind and respectful and thoughtful of other people's time and other things that they have done. You know, I'm going to give you guys a real, like a hack. Here's a few hacks for you. These are like people hacks. We were talking a little bit, Jeff and Regan and I were sharing some hacks. So we're going to talk about some hacks, Jeff. Okay, here's a killer hack. You want to get to know someone really, really well? Just say this. This is how you do it. Um, well, let me say it. Let me back up a little bit. Everyone's job is like super hard. All right, every like you guys all have. I have a hard job. You have a hard job. Everyone has a hard job. The guy driving the taxi has a hard job. The receptionist has a hard job. Every job is really hard. And if you you know, whether it's an hourly, whether you're a CEO or whatever, and so so having empathy around that is really important. And so if you're talking to someone, try this out. Just say your job sounds really hard. Just say that and just. And next thing you know, they have people open up and they tell you all sorts of problems that they're having with their job. And, and it's this really amazing way to connect to somebody. Um, I, you know, that's one, that's one hack. There's some, there's some other ones that we can talk about. This is a scene from that Ferguson business that happened. And, you know, we can talk about gun control and all sorts of other things, but we won't because that's not what this talks about. Um, that's about all I have for right now because I'm hungry and I know people want to go watch a baseball game. And... And that's it. So thank you very much. It was really fun.